Welcome to the Strategic Mind tutorial. In this operation, you will learn how to deploy and move your troops, attack the enemy, and be victorious. If you are new to this genre and have not played many turn-based war games, we advise you to complete all the tutorial operations. You can skip any message by clicking on it with the left mouse button. Units under your command are listed in the Units panel at the bottom of the screen. To the left, you can find the minimap, which will help you to quickly get your bearings in battle. All objects are marked with the corresponding color. Your units are green, allied units are blue, the enemies are red. In the Units panel at the bottom of the screen, you can see the unit that is currently selected, the tank. Open its Unit Info screen by clicking on the highlighted button. The Unit Info screen contains all the key data about the selected unit. Under the Unit picture, you can see its strength. Both the unit's health and damage output depend on strength. The lower the strength, the less damage the unit will deal to the enemy. If the strength reaches zero, the unit is destroyed or forced to retreat. The unit's combat parameters are listed at the top right corner. The higher they are, the better. With the mouse over the combat parameter, you will see a hint with a list of all bonuses and penalties to that parameter at the moment. Now click on the highlighted parameter. This is more detailed information on how this parameter works. Now close this tab. Right under the combat parameters, you can see the unit's equipment panel, an additional equipment that your units can employ in battle. Underneath it, you can see the skills panel. There are a number of passive and active skills unique for every unit class. Infantry has one set of skills, tanks have another, and so forth. When hovering over any skill, you can see a hint explaining how it works. The units class is indicated right above its picture. There you can see its model name as well. You can always change a model name to a custom entry by clicking on it. Now close the unit info screen. It is high time for troops deployment. Every operation starts with the deployment phase, during which you deploy your troops. Select the infantry unit. Look at the highlighted hex. It is a deployment hex. You can deploy your units only in these hexes. Deploy your infantry in the highlighted hex by clicking on it with your left mouse button. Now deploy your artillery unit to the adjacent empty hex. Deploy the tank unit. Great! Now your army is ready to do battle. Click on the End Deploy button to begin the operation. In the top left corner of the screen, you can see the list of your primary and secondary objectives for this operation. Above, you can also see a victory progress bar. This bar indicates how well your troops are doing in the operation. At the top right corner of the screen, you can find the Command Points button. Command points are used for troop embarkation on air, naval, or trained transport, and for the use of headquarters skills, special abilities, giving various tactical advantages to your forces. You can click on it to see the HQ skills available. You will learn more about it in another part of the tutorial. To the left, you can find the Prestige button. Prestige is a resource you can use to acquire more troops and equipment for them. Select the tank by clicking on it with your left mouse. And to the right, in the Unit Actions panel, you can see the Embarkation and Headquarters Skills buttons. Below, you can see the active skills if there are any. In the case of naval units or armored trains, the different parts of the ship or train are also displayed here. The hexes where the unit can move to are highlighted. Now move your tank to the designated hex by clicking on it with the right mouse button. Usually, units can move and attack only once per turn. 
However, there are a number of exceptions to this rule, which will be presented at the later stages of the tutorial. Units can attack either before or after their movement. Select the infantry unit. As you can see, the infantry has fewer movement points than the tanks. To solve this problem, infantry can be equipped with a truck or armored vehicle. More about it in the tutorial part 4, Movement and Transportation. For now, order your infantry to move into the designated hex. Then select the artillery unit. Move it into the designated hex. Your troops have moved to an advantageous position and are ready to storm the city on your next turn. Now your tank can already start firing at the enemy troops. Select the tank unit. Move your mouse over the enemy unit and when you see the cursor change to a target symbol, click on it with the right mouse button. All of your units have finished their turn. Click the End Turn button. Ahead is the city occupied by the enemy troops. Onward. First, we need to do some scouting. Select your infantry unit. Move it into the designated hex. Now select the... Begin the artillery bombardment of the enemy positions. Select the infantry again. Attack the enemy unit in close combat. Select the tank unit. Move it to the adjacent hex. Finish off the enemy infantry. It is time your troops occupy the victory hex. It is marked with a golden color. Congratulations! You have successfully finished the operation. Now you have the victory screen in front of you. It presents a detailed breakdown of the operation. In the leftmost column, you can see the information on your victory points and secondary objective completion. In order to get an absolute victory, you have to get 400 victory points. Initially, you have 150 points. You can obtain 100 points for the completion of all secondary objectives, 25 points for capturing all enemy flags, up to 100 points for eliminating enemy units. For clearing all enemy units, you get additional 25 points. The central column has information about prestige. You can see a detailed breakdown of how much prestige you gained or lost throughout the operation. The rightmost columns have your army statistics, how many of your units were lost and how many enemy units were killed in action. You may have noticed that your result is not the best possible one yet. The reasons are that you have not finished the secondary objective and there are still enemy units left undefeated. To achieve greater results, click the Return to Game button. So you're back in action. You have a couple more turns left to deal with these issues. As all of your troops have already finished their turn, you have to click the End Turn button. The enemy still holds some infrastructure. You have to capture that hex and get rid of the enemy unit to get an absolute victory. There is no better way to start the attack than artillery bombardment. Select your artillery unit. Attack the enemy. Then select the infantry. Keep attacking the enemy. Finally, select the tank unit. Finish off the enemy unit. All enemy units are defeated. Capture the hex where the enemy headquarters were located to complete the secondary objective. Brilliant! Click on the victory progress bar. As you can see, you get the best result possible. 400 points. Click on the Finish Operation button to exit to the Tutorial menu. Good day, Commander! In this operation, we will go over the supply and infrastructure, without which any military campaign would not have been possible.
In the previous part of the tutorial, we mentioned the key parameters of any unit – its ammo, fuel, and movement points. The supply system restores ammunition and fuel through infrastructure. Infrastructure is represented by various facilities such as supply hub, maritime hub, supply point, airfield, railroad station, and seaport. Usually, infrastructure is marked by the flag of the country which is currently controlling it. Later, we will tell you more about every type of infrastructure, but first, you have to capture a staging area for a further offensive operation. Your troops are already in position and ready to advance. Let's not keep the enemy waiting. Select the tank unit. Move it closer to the enemy. Attack the anti-aircraft gun defending the airfield. Now we can finish it off with the infantry. Select the unit. Move into the hex next to the airfield. Attack the anti-aircraft gun. The enemy airfield is now left unprotected. Move the infantry inside and capture it. When you defeat the enemy unit, the airfield has been captured. Now we can move our aircraft units here. The airfield provides supply to aircraft units restoring their ammo and fuel on every landing. Additionally, aircraft units can acquire new equipment and be reinforced while landed on an airfield. We will get back to it in another part of the tutorial. Right now, we have to capture the supply point. You should start the attack with air bombardment. Select the bomber. Attack the enemy artillery. After attacking land targets, aircraft can be moved one hex away to free up the space for the next at Great! Attack the enemy artillery. The enemy unit is destroyed. Now we have to occupy the supply point. Select the infantry. Move it into the hex with the supply point. The supply point is in our hands. Unfortunately, it is severely damaged by our bombardment, so currently it does not provide supply. Open the Supply Points info screen by clicking on it with the middle mouse button. As you can see, all infrastructure has its own HP. If it goes down to 50% or lower, the facility ceases to function until its HP is restored and is higher than 50%. At the end of every turn, all infrastructure restores 20% HP. Close the tab. Select the supply point. This is the supply zone of the selected infrastructure facility, marked with the box icons on the hex grid. Currently, they are red in color, as the supply point is damaged and is not functioning. Thus, there is no supply right now. In a one hex range around the selected infrastructure, there is a service zone, marked with the range icons. In these hexes, your units can acquire or change equipment and be reinforced. However, in our case, even after restoring its HP, the supply point will not provide supply, as it is not connected to the supply network. The supply network is comprised of all the interconnected infrastructure on the map. Supply hubs and maritime hubs play a key role in the supply network. While supply points just redistribute the ammo and fuel to the nearby troops, the supply hubs generate ammo and fuel providing the whole supply network with it. Maritime hub works similarly, but only if there is a seaport under your control next to it. Consequently, without the connection to a supply or maritime hub, the supply points have nothing to redistribute to your troops. You can also see the connections between the different elements of infrastructure marked with supply lines. These lines connect. Before you end the turn, let's land our aircraft for refueling. Select the aircraft. Click on the landing button in the Unit Actions panel. 
Select the second aircraft. Click on the landing button again. Click on the end turn button. Select the tank unit. In order to restore the supply, you have to capture the enemy seaport along with the maritime hub. First, however, cut off the enemy infantry at the eastern outpost from the supply. To do it, move your tank unit into the designated hex. Select the supply point of the eastern outpost. It is high time we take care of the coastal city. Select the infantry unit. Move it to the designated hex. Select the second infantry unit. Move it to the designated hex. Click on the end turn button. The enemy has made an attempt to break through the blockade and restore supply, but it failed. Select the enemy infantry that attacked your tank. Now select the supply point you have recently captured. Well, enough with this talk. To establish our own supply network, we have to occupy the seaport and the maritime hub. Also, we should not damage them too much, otherwise we will not be getting supplies until they're repaired. Click on the All tab next to the minimap to see all of your units in the Units panel at the bottom of the screen. Select the bomber. Attack the enemy unit occupying the seaport. The seaport now has only 6 HP left. If we keep bombarding it, it will stop providing supply and we will have to wait for its restoration. So we should attack the infantry in the adjacent hex instead. Select the second bomber. Attack the infantry defending the maritime hub. Now that the enemy units are weakened by the air bombardment, we can attack them in close combat. First, we have to finish off the enemy artillery, so that it will not provide fire support to the infantry unit. You can learn more about fire support mechanics in part 5 of the tutorial. Select your infantry. Attack the enemy artillery. The enemy unit was destroyed. Move your infantry into the city to occupy the seaport. Excellent! Now the enemy infantry is left without artillery support, and you have taken the seaport. It provides supply to the naval units and allows them to acquire and change equipment. Located next to the seaport is Maritime Hub. Only supply hubs and maritime hubs that have a seaport next to them can generate ammo and fuel and deliver it to all other infrastructure through the supply network. It is time to finish this battle and re-establish our supply. Select the second infantry unit. Destroy the enemy unit. Occupy the maritime hub. Great! The primary objective is now accomplished. However, there is still a secondary objective left – to capture the eastern outpost. Click on the Return to Game button. Select the tank you Attack the enemy infantry. Great! The enemy has been defeated. There is only one infantry unit left to deal with, and the city will be ours. Move the tank to the designated hex. All of your units have finished their turn. Click on the End Turn button. Select your infantry unit.
Now select the bomber. Select the tank unit. Attack the infantry occupying the eastern outpost. The last of the enemy units has fallen. Now your troops are free to take the eastern outpost. Make it happen to conclude the operation. Congratulations! You have successfully finished the operation. Click on the Victory Progress bar in the top left corner of the screen. Click on the Finish Operation button to exit to the tutorial menu. Good day, Commander. In this operation, we will go over the unit classes, upgrades, equipment, experience, and heroes. So you will learn how to turn an ordinary army into the fine-tuned instrument molded to fit your strategy in the best way possible. Let's get started. There are several already deployed units under your command, yet they are marked not with green color and a round-shaped strength indicator, but with the yellow color and a hexagon-shaped strength indicator. These are non-core units. They are given to your army for the purpose of the current operation only. Finish your deployment by clicking with your left mouse button first on the unit and then on the designated deploy hex. Deploy it in the designated hex. Now deploy the tank unit in the adjacent hex. Apart from the troops, this time you have a hefty amount of prestige. Prestige is the resource that you spend to acquire new units and equipment. Open the Acquire Units tab by clicking on the Prestige button. In the left column, you can see the current list of your core units. At the bottom of the tab, you can see the list of available units. To filter available units by class, you can click on the corresponding filter button. At the top of the Acquire Units tab, you can find the information about the selected unit including its combat parameters and skills. Select the Recon class among the filters. Now select the highlighted model. Click on the Acquire button. Next, select the Anti-Tank filter. Right now, the Anti-Tank unit we need is already selected. Click on the Acquire button to add it to your core units. All units are available in the historically accurate periods. As you progress through the campaign, new units will become available. You can upgrade your troops to newer models. If both newer and older models are from one series, then the older unit cost will be deducted from the new unit cost. If they are not from the same series, then only 50% of the older unit cost will be deducted. The upgraded unit will retain all the experience gained before an upgrade. If the unit has an upgrade available, it is marked with a yellow arrow symbol. Let us see how this works in practice. Select the newly bought recon in the unit list. To upgrade it, select the Upgrade tab. Select Recon in the list of available upgrades. Now you can see the parameters of your unit. The increase or decrease in combat parameters after the upgrade is marked with green and red numbers. You can see the prestige cost of the upgrade at the bottom. Now click on the Upgrade button. Close the Acquire Units tab. Now we have to deploy the newly acquired units. Select the Recon unit. Deploy it in the designated hex. Then deploy the anti-tank gun next to the Recon. Click on the End Deploy button to begin the operation. There seem to be no enemy units yet. Click on the end turn button. The enemy troops are close. We have to destroy them. Select the artillery. 
Attack the enemy infantry unit. Good. Now select the anti-tank unit. Move it closer to the enemy. Attack the enemy tank. Your anti-tank gun has gained a new experience level. We will get back to it after the battle. Select the self-propelled artillery. Attack the second enemy infantry unit. Select the tank unit. Finish off the enemy infantry. Now only one enemy unit is still standing. Select your recon, move it to the designated hex. Finish off the enemy unit. Excellent! The enemy attack was repelled. Our recon unit spotted more enemy troops in the distance. You should make more thorough preparations for the enemy's main force's arrival and strengthen your troops with additional equipment. Open the unit info screen of the infantry. Click on the equipment tab. Equipment is all sorts of additional weaponry, devices and personnel aimed at strengthening your troops, starting with machine guns and finishing with the field medics and sapper squads. Equipment can either give passive bonuses or require an activation with a limited number of uses. Select the mortar from the list of equipment. Click on the Acquire button at the Close the Equipment tab. Now select the self-propelled artillery. Open its information tab by click. Select one of the equipment slots. From the list of available equipment, select the incendiary shells. Click on the Acquire button. Close the tab. Note that now there is a new incendiary shells button on the Unit Actions panel in the bottom right corner of the screen. You can activate or deactivate incendiary shells by clicking on its button on the Unit Actions panel. Bear in mind that it's expandable equipment and you will have to pay in prestige for every activation. You still remember that your anti-tank unit got a new level, right? Open the Unit Info screen. Right above the unit picture, there's an experience bar. As the unit deals damage to the enemy, this bar fills up. The amount of experience a unit gains is equal to the damage dealt. Additionally, a unit gains 10 experience when it suffers losses or defeats an enemy unit. Recon units gain an additional 10 experience when they gather intelligence data. There are other class-specific ways to get experience, which you can learn by hovering the mouse over the experience bar of any given class. When the unit gets enough experience for a new level, you can level it up manually. To do it, open the Level Up tab. In this tab, you can see all the skills available to this unit. Select the Vulnerability skill. Click on the Level Up button. Get back to the Unit Info screen and have a look at Combat Parameter. As you can see, all attack and defense values have increased by 1. The more experienced the unit, the higher its combat effectiveness. We should also mention heroes, outstanding individuals who could make a big impact on your war effort. Heroes are unique historical personalities. Each of them can be assigned to serve in one of your units, providing it with an additional selection of very impressive skills. There are different heroes for different unit classes. Some unit classes have more than one. In order to get a hero, one of your units has to fulfill the requirements. You can see the corresponding progress bar above the hero skills list. Select the highlighted hero from the list. Click on the Assign button. Confirm the assignment. When you assign a hero to a unit, all previously learned abilities of this unit are reset. As you can see, the list of available skills has been expanded with hero skills. Select the Devastating Fire skill. Click on the Level Up button. Now close the Information tab. Click on the End Turn button. Here comes the enemy main force. It seems their commander is in the tank unit. 
It is a perfect moment to try out the new shells. Select the self-propelled artillery. Click on the incendiary shells, then attack the designated enemy unit. The artillery did more damage. Now select the tank unit. Move it to the designated hex. Attack the enemy artillery. Your recon unit must be feeling left out. Select it. Command it to attack the enemy infantry unit. The enemy artillery is on its last legs. Select the infantry. Move it closer to the enemy unit. Attack the enemy artillery. Perfect. Without the artillery fire support, enemy troops won't last long. Now select your artillery. Bombard the remaining enemy infantry unit. Select your infantry unit. Move it closer to the enemy. Finish off the enemy unit. The enemy commander is left alone, while you have an anti-tank unit at hand. Select it. Move it closer to the enemy. Attack the enemy unit. One attack is good, but two is even better. Using the devastating fire ability, order a second attack to finish off the enemy tank. We have dealt with the enemy commander. Congratulations! The operation was a success. Click on the Finish Operation button to exit to the tutorial. Hello, Commander! In this operation, you will learn about the transportation and troop movement across the vast operational areas. Your task is to capture the Northern Island. To complete it, your troops will have to cross the channel first. The easiest way to do it is to board the naval transport. Select the tank unit. On the lower right panel, find and click on the Embarkation button. In the menu, select Embark on a ship. It did not work, did it? That's because you can only embark on a ship next to an operational seaport. Fortunately, you've got one nearby. Move the tank unit into the seaport hex. Click on the Embarkation button. Note that you cannot change a unit's equipment while it's inside a transport of any kind. Perfect! Your tank unit has boarded a transport ship. Now move the ship to the opposite coast into the highlighted hex. The only thing left is to click on the disembark button, and your tank will be able to join the battle. It seems we forgot to mention that all heavy vehicles can only be unloaded at a seaport. Naval transport is an excellent way to transport your troops, but the fastest way to redeploy is by air. Air transports can cover large distances fast and bring your troops to virtually any location of any map. However, only infantry units can board an airplane. Moreover, such transport is vulnerable to enemy fighters and anti-air guns. Be very careful. Loading your troops onto air transport will require an operational airfield. Select the highlighted infantry. Click on the Embarkation button. Select Embark on an airplane. It seems they couldn't do it. The problem is your unit has ground transport. If you plan on loading this unit into an airplane, you will have to discard the transport first. Click on the infantry unit with your middle mouse button to open. Select the Equipment tab. Select your ground transport. Click on the Discard button. Great! Now you're… Click on the Embarkation button. Select Embark on an airplane. Air transport has 15 move points, which allows it to bring troops across huge distances in one turn. Move the air transport to the highlighted hex on the Northern Island.
click on the disembark button. Unfortunately, units can only disembark from the air transport at an operational airfield. Yet there is one exception to this rule. Paratroopers. Select them. Click on the embarkation button. Select embark on an airplane. Travel to the highlighted hex. Land the paratroopers in the enemy's rear. It surely was a splendid idea. But paratroopers can only land on clear terrain. Our offensive seems to have slowed down. So let's have a look at the terrain and movement types. Open the highlighted hexes info screen. Every hex has a set of parameters affecting both the troops movement and combat. At the top of the info screen, you can see terrain type. In our case, it's forest. In the left column, you can see the move point cost that units have to spend to enter this hex. In the right column, you can see the information about combat bonuses or penalties the unit in this hex will have. At the bottom, you can read more about this terrain type and the infrastructure present in it, if there is any. Close the hex info screen. Open the tanks unit info screen. Note the move points parameter. If you hover over the move points icon, you will get a hint with the unit's movement type. Now close the unit info screen. Click on the end turn button. Your troops are ready to begin the assault, commander. It is time we take this island. Our paratroopers will be the vanguard of our advance. Select the paratroopers on the unit's panel. Move the unit to the highlighted hex. Note that if your troops land next to an enemy unit, they will be automatically attacked, as they will be an easy target. Thus, it is better to land further from cities and enemy positions. Click on the disembark button. Drop the paratroopers in the highlighted hex. Your paratroopers can still move after the landing. Move them closer to the city. There is an enemy unit in the city. Let's bombard it before attacking it with our troops. Now select the bomber. Attack the enemy infantry. Select your paratroopers. Now finish off enemy infantry with your own. Occupy the seaport the enemy was guarding. Great! The seaport is ours. Using the units panel, select the tank unit aboard the transport ship. Move it to the highlighted hex. Click on the disembark button. Click on the highlighted hex. Finally, our tanks have some solid ground under their tracks. As the unit can still move after disembarkation, order it to capture the airfield. Now we have only the infantry left to disembark. Select it on the unit pa Move the plane closer to the airfield. Click on the disembark button. Click on the highlighted hex. All of your troops have now successfully landed on the northern island. Click on the end turn button. There is still one enemy controlled city on the island. It is across the river and is connected to the seaport both by road and by the railroad. A word about rivers. There are two types of them in the game, big and small. Big River occupies an entire hex and normally cannot be crossed without boarding a ship. Only infantry without ground transport and heavy equipment can cross it on foot. Unlike any other unit, infantry can even attack from the river, but with serious penalties to both attack and defense parameters.
Small rivers run between hexes. All units can cross them but have to spend additional move points to do so. Units can attack across small rivers, but with serious penalties to combat parameters. Moving back to the big rivers. The easiest way to cross them is by finding a bridge. However, you must be careful. While on the bridge, your troops are vulnerable and get serious combat penalties. Select the tank unit. Move it towards the enemy city. Good! As the infantry cannot keep up with the tanks on foot, you should make use of transport. First, select the paratroopers. Order them to capture the railroad station. The railroad is a great way to quickly redeploy your troops. Additionally, it connects remote supply points to the supply hub across great distances. Its only downside is that you can only use the existing railroad network. Click on the Embarkation button. Select the Embark on a train. Send the train with paratroopers into the highlighted hex. A few more words about the ground transport. Wheeled trucks and tracked personnel carriers are the basic transport of any land army. Any unit that isn't self-propelled can be equipped with transport vehicles. Open the infantry's unit info screen. Click on the vehicle slot. Here you can see the list of all vehicles available. Over the course of the campaign, the list will expand with new models. Select the truck from the list. Click on the Acquire button. Perfect! Now your infantry can keep up with the self-propelled units. Note that the infantry with ground transport can move further than its usual three hexes. However, while inside its vehicle, the unit is considered an easy target. Moreover, it will not be able to attack on its current turn. Hexes that can only be reached by boarding ground transport are marked with a truck icon. Select the infantry unit. Move the infantry into the highlighted hex. That was a good demonstration of what could happen if you send your troops forward recklessly, without proper reconnaissance. The risk of losing them is high. Being an easy target, your unit will automatically be attacked by all enemy troops if it enters their gun range. Click on the End Turn button. Select the tank unit. Advance with your tank and capture the railroad station right under the enemy's nose. Now attack the enemy artillery. Excellent! Now select the paratroopers on the unit panel. Send them to the hex next to the station. Click on the Disembark button. Disembark the unit into the highlighted hex. You have approached the enemy artillery from the rear. Your unit has to attack across the small river. Finish off the enemy artillery. The enemy has been defeated. The city is defenseless, and there's no stopping us from capturing it. Occupy the enemy supply point. Congratulations! The operation was a success. Click on the Finish Operation button to exit to the tutorial menu. Hello, Commander! This time we'll take a look at the key combat mechanics of the Strategic Mind series. Weather has a great impact on the operation. Rain and other uncommon weather types might complicate your operation a fair bit. 
The rain applies a 33% penalty to all units' attack values and provides a plus one bonus to camouflage. Fighting in the rain is therefore a lot harder. Some units can negate the rain penalties using the all-weather skill. In the bottom left corner of the screen, right above the minimap, there is the rain icon. If you hover over it, you will see the hint explaining its effects. You can also see how it affects your troops by hovering over unit parameters in the unit info screen. Now click on the tactical bomber with your middle mouse button to open its unit in. The most important indicator for every unit is its strength. Both the unit's health and damage output depend on strength. At maximum strength, the unit will deal 100% of its damage. The lower the unit's current strength, the less damage it will deal to the enemy, and as the unit's strength is recovered, the damage will grow. Moreover, strength serves as the health indicator for land units and aircraft. Naval units have hull HP instead. If the strength reaches zero, the unit is destroyed or forced to retreat. Above the strength indicator, there is another one, damaged. This has to do with the two types of damage in the game, lethal and non-lethal. Lethal damage immediately reduces the unit's strength, meaning that some of the troops were killed in action. In contrast, any non-lethal damage dealt to the unit is automatically restored on the next turn, provided the unit was within the active supply zone. Now close the unit info screen. Let's see the damage distribution in practice. Select a bomber. Attack the enemy infantry. Move your bomber away. Select the artillery. Attack the enemy infantry. You may have noticed that the damage values are displayed as two numbers separated by a slash. The left number is the amount of lethal damage, and the right number is the non-lethal damage. Open the enemy infantry's unit info screen. Have a look at the strength and damaged indicators. Your bomber did 4-0 damage meaning 4 lethal and 0 non-lethal. Your artillery did 1-4 damage, meaning 1 lethal and 4 non-lethal damage. Thus, the enemy unit's strength was reduced by a total of 9 and is now 1-10. At the same time, the enemy has 4-10 damaged. If this unit receives no further damage, on the next turn, its damaged will become 0-10 and its strength will increase to 5 slash 10, but only if it is within the active supply zone. Now close the unit info screen. You will not give the opponent a chance to recover, right? Select the tank, move to the highlighted hex. Attack the enemy infantry. Note that the enemy has zero strength left, but the unit hasn't been destroyed. This state is called suppression. Open the enemy infantry unit info screen. As you can see, even though the unit's strength is zero, it still has damaged value. That is why the unit still exists. Suppressed units will try to get away from the opposing forces, and any further attack against the unit will either destroy it or force it to surrender. Usually suppression lasts for one turn, but if the unit is within the active supply zone, its strength will be restored, and the unit will function as normal. Now close the unit info screen. Select the recon unit. Move it to the highlighted hex. Attack the suppressed enemy infantry unit. Suppressed enemy units surrender automatically if they are attacked in close combat. When you capture the enemy unit, you gain some prestige, ammo, and fuel. Recon units, as well as infantry with scout squad equipment, gather intelligence data by capturing enemy units. Intelligence data makes all nearby enemy units identified, giving you full information about them. Click on the End Turn button. 
As you can see, the enemy units outside your recon unit's button range no longer count as identified. The reason for it is that intelligence data effect lasts only one turn. Now let's talk about spotting, as demonstrated by your recon unit. Select it. Move the recon unit to the highlighted hex. You have spotted the enemy. At this point, the enemy is considered unknown. You don't know the unit's characteristics, only its location. While the unit is unknown, it gets a solid defensive bonus. The closer your unit is to the enemy, the more information you'll gather. Move the recon unit closer to the enemy positions. Now the enemy unit is considered spotted. You know what type of unit it is, but do not have the full information about it, such as its strength and exact combat parameters. Spotted units still get bonuses to their defenses, but much smaller ones. Move the recon unit even closer to the enemy. Now you have finally identified the enemy unit. This means you have full information about it. It also loses any defensive bonuses it had from concealment. The recon unit has the highest base spotting range among your units. Recon units are essential for locating and identifying enemies. Now that the enemy has been located and identified, it is time to strike. The best way to start the assault on the enemy positions is by preliminary bombardment. So move it closer to the enemy. Attack the enemy infantry. Some units, including the artillery, can provide fire support to nearby allies. That's why they should be dealt with as quickly as possible. Now select the bomber. Attack the enemy artillery. Anti-aircraft guns pose a serious threat to your aircraft units due to their overwatch. The ability to attack every plane entering their gun range. Upon being overwatched, the aircraft loses the ability to move until the next turn. If the enemy anti-aircraft gun wasn't spotted before the attack, it also surprises your unit, leaving it unable to both move and attack. Same as with the fire support, you can check whether the unit has the overwatch ability by opening its unit info screen and looking through its Note that the overwatch air skill is currently crossed out. That means that the unit will not be able to overwatch again this turn. Yet it can still offer fire support to the nearby units or return fire if it comes under attack. Now close the unit in. Despite these unfortunate setbacks, you have enough forces to occupy the city. Select the tank unit. Move it to the highlighted hex. Attack the enemy infantry. As you can see, this wasn't the best idea. Tanks are very vulnerable to infantry while in close quarters. Battles in difficult terrain such as city, forest or mountains or against well-entrenched infantry units. While in close quarters, tanks lose 80% of their defense. Thus, you shouldn't assault cities with tanks if you haven't lowered the enemy infantry strength first. When attacking, keep in mind that the enemy's return fire will happen before your units attack. Consequently, your unit will attack with its strength already lowered, causing it to deal less damage. There are other ways to lower a unit's combat readiness. Open the enemy infantry's unit info screen. Hover over the side.